Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. And uh, hopefully you'll find some information on here helpful. And if not, at least you'll have a whole bunch of outboard fun. So, um, we've got another little victim in here. The fellow's been kind of calling me on it. Is it ready? Is it ready? No, it's not ready. So, we're going to take a look at it, do a quick facts check, and hopefully it's just uh, maybe a dirty carb. Who knows? Um, might not have spark. We'll have to see. It was long from a friend to a friend to a friend who said he tried to start it, tried to start it, couldn't get it started. So, could be something as simple as just a dried up carburetor that needs to be popped back to life. And uh, the engine in question, you understand us, is a little Evan Rude, about a 1979-80, So, let's take a look at this victim. There it is, right there, little 9.9, .9, so let's get the hood off of this guy and see what it looks like. Outside apparent looks pretty clean, inside looks pretty clean as well, very clean in fact. So, so, let's get a spark checker, a compression gauge hooked up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got the compression tester hooked to the bottom. We are on zero. Spark checker, watch these top two again. good ones nice hot spark and we got about 125 on that bottom cylinder 125 you know it could have been just something they had a bad gas connector you never know you never know, but zero on the top. Five good ones. We got one twenty five, about one thirty two on the top. This motor has excellent compression. It has the correct spark plugs in it. According to the little sticker right there, they should be L77. JC4s, and that's what's in it. They're a little bit on the dirty side. So I'm just going to hit them with my wire wheel real quick. I'm going to go ahead and give each cylinder a little shot of tri-flow. Oh, I grabbed it with the piston. So, there. So that'll help it pop if it's gone. I'll get these plugs back in and get it hooked up and put in the tank. I'll be back. Okay, I went and got my gas jug, topped it off, and uh, did the fax check on it. Let's see what we get. I'm not going to choke it because I spray triflow in the cylinders. If it don't fire, then I'll choke it.
turn off the noisy sucker. <laughs> well, 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 well. That's about what I expected off of this motor. I'm guessing when they tried to start it, they had either a bad fuel hose, bad fuel connector, um, possibly even bad fuel. Who knows? Um, it's got outstanding compression. The overall appearance um, and condition of the motor seems to be excellent for a motor around here of its age. Full show. Um, sprayed a little tri flow in the cylinders, cleaned up the spark plugs, lubed a few things up, and boom, starts right up. Um, that's kind of how I was expecting this one to go. Um, the person that brought it to me, like I said, the motor was twice loaned down the food chain from the owner. And the individual that ended up with it is, I would say, less than very versed on two-stroke outboard operations. I'm being nice here. You understand? So, about what I expected. I'll call the owner and tell him to come get his fine running little cutie and then what are we going to move to next oh i got some others i sure do so we'll get on them and uh don't know exactly what that's going to be yet so stick around and let's find out i'll be right back Okay, while we let the primer dry on the little 15, we will start on the next victim. This guy's called me a couple times. Is it ready? Is it ready? He got it free. It's a 35 Evan Rood. If I can see the tag. It's a 19 and 76 looks to be, and it looks like it's been sitting for a long time. So I got my Sparky checker half hooked up. There's one, and there's two. I already replaced the top plug wire because that's what was on it. So. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what we did there. Let me get you where you can see the thing. Ooh. And I can find a ground. Looks like a ground. And so, 
let's look at those top two right about in there. See if we got anything. We got hot sparky one and two. Let's look at some compressiones. We will do the bottom and see what kind of compression this old girl has. Yeah, she looks a little bit. I see some spider webs and whatnot in there. We are on to zero. Let's give her some pulls. <laughs> Four is going to be enough on that guy. And we are looking at about 110 on the bottom. It felt like it had some compression in that cylinder. And let's get to top. We are on the zero. Let's do that again. Four good ones. And we are at, oh, about 116. So she's got some good compressionist in there. Now, we got the compression and we got the spark. Unhook of the spark of the spider. One thing I also noticed, I dipped it down in my tank last night and let it set in there because all the seals and whatnot. For the shift is really tight. You can see, hopefully I got some vias grips on that shift handle. Because it's feeling a little tight in there. But like I said, God knows how how long this thing's been. It's it has loosened up. Just by being in my tank a little bit. So we'll get them off. And with it running, it'll help suck that in, so, yeah. All right. Now, it had these plugs in there, and they may work, but they're not what came with it. Well, I mean, these came with it. They were in there. B7 HS10, but I'm going to find the Champion plugs, which are L77J4. That's what I'm going to put in it. Let me scare some of them up and I'll be back. Okay, so went ahead and took that old carburetor right off of that 35. Um, and it's a good thing I did. And I'll be taking one or two other parts off too. Okay, so what I found. The carburetor itself, I took the screws out, it don't look too bad at all, really. Um, that's a good sign. I mean, that looks pretty good. Dirty on the outside really bad, but we'll clean that up. And the throat's pretty bad. Um, but as bad as it is, the butterflies move. Um, kind of. So a little cleaning and lube, those will be fine. 
So, but the interesting thing I found was when I took and removed the carburetor, you can see the outer casings all toast. So that that most likely would have leaked. Um, sure, wouldn't want to put C with that. And then look in there. See that? Yeah. And I didn't touch that. That's that just kind of came off like that. That's the nipple for the fuel pump. But if you look at the fuel pump on this thing, it's bad anyway. Um, so I'll replace the fuel pump. And we'll clean up that old carb. We'll get some new hose. And get this puppy all back together and see if she is a runner. Okay, I took the old fuel pump off and went out and got me some brand new hose and another fuel pump. Now, I know that my ultrasonic cleaner is being a little noisy, but I'm going to show you a test, a quick test you can do on these fuel pumps. And they should work like this. You take and you blow in the tube and then suck on the tube. I can blow, but I can't suck air through, okay? Then you go to the other one. I cannot blow, but I can suck air through. The old suck and blow test. Hey, that's how you can quickly check to see for the most part if one of these OMC types is at least the innards are correct in there. So do that a little quick. I tested a couple out there and I could not do that. So I just left them and I grabbed this one. So that's that. So we'll get that on. I'll get the carburetor out in a minute. Okay, so I got the carburetor out of the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned up real nice. Same with the bowl, but even though I had it in the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm going to take my old guitar strings, and right in the bottom of the bowl, you go through the front where the drain plug is, and you make sure that that wire feeds all the way through that brass jet, that's your high jet in there. Make sure you can see that wire. I don't know if you can see it there. But I can see it wiggly, wiggly, squeaky, squeaky, wiggly, wiggly. Make sure that's open. If you got compressed air, psh, psh, spray it out with compressed air. Inside came out really nice, really clean, but still the same thing. Take my little wires, clean. Just make sure everything, all these little pockets and stuff are clean. And especially... The pickup. Make sure those are all good and clean. Squeaky, squeaky. Spray a little spray can, rattle can, carb cleaner in there. Okay. Over here, I went and got a different, not new, but different fuel pump that's much later model in better shape, for sure. New hoses. I had to put a new quick connect there wasn't even one there it was gone but that hose if you're replacing one hose if it's got cracks in it and everything chances are the rest of them are bad too so replace them here's this the other hose that came off that comes from the quick connect to the fuel pump this stuff's just rotten just peeling off rotten if you're replacing one and you find one bad one chances are they're all bad so get them out all right, the carburetor's all cleaned up. Let me get it uh, buttoned up. I'll spray some Tri-Flow. So I'll figure out what I did with it in there and uh, lube that all up. And uh, as soon as I find it. And we'll get that buttoned up and back on. I'll be back. Okay, I took my little drill and I drilled some small holes right there and one above it. Then I came into here, drilled another one right in that zerk that was all plugged up and I opened that up bigger and then I came in 
from right up under here and did the same thing, a hole on each side. Because the throttle would barely move, it was all... And then I took a pair of nice big vice grips and now I've got it where it's nice and loose. But uh, it was all stiff and everything, so got it back together. Let me uh, get it in the tank and we'll see if it'll fire up. Okay, I'm taking the salmon out of the dry box. They've got a nice pecka seal or whatever it's called. They get, once you dry them, they get this nice sticky layer. And then we'll put them in the smoke cup. Now you can see the old smoker just doing its thing. After they smoke for about three hours, I'll check them. The heat source is in the bottom box. And there's a pipe that runs up between the two. So that that top box only gets about 100 and say 75 degrees. Alrighty. She's a smoking. Alrighty. I got everything hooked back up. And, uh, Oh yeah, that feels better. And it would help the fuel system flow if I hooked the fuel hoses in the right order. There was nothing wrong with the uh, quick connect. I had these two hoses backwards. I've done that before. Yeah, boy. Must be a long day. If you see some smoke, I got my salmon in the smoker. Yummy. Let's see what this thing will do. Let me turn on the sucker fan. It's going to be smoky. I don't have a choke. We'll see. Actually don't run half bad. So there it is. Hmm. She's a runner.
That one's ready to go to work. This one's ready to go to work. Do you remember the little... Nah, no, 15? That's uh, the fella that's coming up from Idaho. Well, I painted it up after I primed it. And now I couldn't find any of that goofy blue that Evan Rude's using these days. So the color I have on there, after the coat of primer, I hit it with the gloss black Krylon. Los Blacka. I hit it with that. And then, Duplicolor. And I don't know, this one's called Indigo Blue. So what I do is I put the gloss black on over the primer. Then, I put a thin coat of this Duplicolor indigo blue and it gets pretty close um, it looks pretty good it's a nice dark dark blue that way and that's the way these motors came and uh, and you say well why don't you just find the right paint what Evan Rude makes and put on because any and all paint that comes to Kodiak Island has to come hazmat so it's cheaper for me way cheaper to buy what's available and that looks pretty good and it'll do what paint is supposed to do which is protect it so this little cutie is ready to go to work I think it came out pretty good well it's been a full day that's for sure so, we got the 25 Evan Rood. I kept calling it a 35, I think, but it's a 25. Uh, 19 and 76. Um, it's a bicentennial motor. So, we got that one uh, good enough, brought back to life to uh, get out there and get to work and get this fella some fish, I hope. And we got the little 15 Evan Road. Uh, we took that one a long way and it's ready to go on a fishing, hunting, whatever trip it's going to the south end of the island when the fella gets up here. So that one's all squared away. And uh, so we got some fish in the smoker. We got some fish in the freezer. And looks like I got some berries, some raspberries and currant berries I need to pick. So while I got a little daylight left, I'm going to call this one a wrap. As always, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thank you for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.